all started rather innocently. It was a beautiful Sunday night when we walked down to Santa Monica Pier. The Democrats were in town. I didn't have a political agenda. I just needed some images for some educational films I was working on. A wood tick, a lime tick, and a poly tick. This was it. This was America. This was politics in our own backyard. This was democracy. It was so exciting. The energy in the air was absolutely touchable. The people from all walks of life. The free exchange of political ideas. This was living. This was Los Angeles, California at the Democratic National Convention. In fact, the only ones not enjoying themselves were the protesters, who were banging on the sides of the van, yelling and making a mess. They didn't like it. Why'd they come down? It didn't matter. They weren't going to spoil my party. I was in political heaven. The event was sponsored by a bunch of all-American companies and gave the public a chance to mingle with the delegates before the convention began. I have to admit, I felt a little vulnerable being around these protesters. So I was glad that the police were there on horseback, on foot, in the air, behind the fences in riot gear. It made me feel safe to be an American. <laughs> it was time to eat. All we could find was a place that was having what was called a green party. What could be better? A cold beer? Intellectual political conversation? Good company? The protesters outside were so loud. So I grabbed my green party t-shirt and I headed outside to see what was happening. The situation had gotten a little bit tense. The protesters were beginning to interfere with the delegates' ability to get into a party mood. So the police took quick and impressive action, dividing the protesters with their horses. Thank God they were there. I figured we'd better leave before things get ugly and come back tomorrow for the Democratic National Convention for our chance to see Al Gore in person. I could never have imagined how I would be personally transformed over the horrifying events that I would witness over the next few days at the Democratic National Convention. Today, we were going for the gusto. We were looking for Al Gore in the flesh. Soon enough, we came across a big gathering of police. This must be it. This must be Al Gore in person, talking and moving amongst the people. Otherwise, why would so much police protection be here? We parked the car and went looking for Al Gore himself. Strange, at the park everyone was dressed funny, and they were talking about ideas that didn't really match what I'd heard on television. There are people in this country willing to make a change, make a difference. It's very hard when we have so many different things we're having to scream about. It's really hard to know, should we just keep screaming or is it time to give up, you know? But we can't, we can't, we have to just keep going with it. Our elected leaders have never been accountable to the American people. I tried to get away from all these people with all these strange alternative ideas. I was happy to find the police. How are the people behaving today? Okay? No incidents at all? Everybody's okay? Good. I was overjoyed when I bumped into a group of billionaires at the park. I'm Felonius X. Perhaps you know my brother Heinous X. We're the billionaires for Bush and Gore. Surely they would know where Al Gore was. And I represent the military industrial complex. And I'm tickled pink with Bush and Gore because I own both of them. Why should we vote for Bush and Gore? Well, because they keep the status quo intact. And the status quo is a good thing. And you just will have all this unrest if the status quo is intact. What's really nice is we live in a state that spent 30% of its budget last year on subsidies for the super rich, corporate donors. Now, 30% is a nice start. 
But my feeling is we're in favor of proportional representation. You see, we control 95% of the wealth. The top 1% of wealthy Americans control 95% of the wealth. So my feeling is the state should be spending 95% of its budget in corporate subsidies and giveaways to the super rich. Finally, my first political discussion. And with genuine billionaires, this was democracy. I surmise it's too late for you to restore the democracy that the forefathers envisioned for you. You know, our forefathers would shit if they see what was happening right now. What we're eating today, we're eating food, we're eating fruit, fresh organic fruit, rice and beans, oh, organic salads. Why spend money on education, on environment? Let's put all our money into weaponry. That's where we can really use our engineers and scientists. To believe that we're being taken over by the corporations. Basically, nobody's caring about education. We need participatory democracy, a real democracy in this country. No, I'm very concerned about one candidate in particular. It's a guy called, uh, I think it's R Ralph. Gore and Bush, they're all in one, and I'm sick of voting for lesser evil. I own the media, and I own the news. And I, I don't know if I can buy off this, this man called, somebody help me, Ralph. And I'm going to vote my conscience and I'm voting for Nader. What about all those people that tell you you're wasting your vote? Um, I don't, I'm voting my conscience and I'd rather waste it on Nader, which I don't think it's a waste, than vote for somebody I don't believe in, which is Gore. I would like to be in a part of all decision-making processes that affect my life. And so I, I'm not going to be voting for anybody, including Ralph Nader. So I've just seen an increased policing of the state and also criminalization of, of youth in general. I'm sorry, I control the media. I don't want you to talk anymore. Not wanting to offend the billionaires, I moved on. People were pretty excited to see the media. He sure seemed upset. I can't handle it. The media here is fucked. Then I found out there was a march next. We got to walk down a street where cars normally drive, and it was all about the corporate backbone of democracy. What could be more democratic? It's a good thing the police were there to protect the delegates. And there were so many of them. So About. What do you think of them blocking traffic here? Do they have the right to do this or are they a bunch of weirdos? No, they most certainly do have the right to block traffic. Everyone deserves to be heard. So you guys have to have your chance and I'll wait until you're finished. Well, cool, thank you. You're quite welcome. We're moving through buildings that actually reflect corporate globalization and the keeping of misery on the third world. That's the statement we need to make and not let it be neglected by police uh, tactics. They were everywhere. On the street corners, on bicycles, in the sky. As a marcher, I was so glad they were there to protect us. Who the streets? Our streets! Who the streets? Our streets! Who the streets? Our streets! This was the city's finest hour. And I could tell my new friends were proud. Stand up and be counted! We've ruled this country for too long from behind closed limo doors! We matter and you don't! Hey, what time is our Rage Against the Machine playing? Forget the concert tonight by Rage Against the Machine right across the street. A free concert tonight with a group called Rage Against the Machine. Now that sounded hip. Al Gore could wait till tomorrow. I was ready for a concert. We encountered a bit of heavy traffic on the way downtown and had no idea that the night had turned into a melee. Some call it a police riot. Needless to say, we had never made it to the concert that night. Is the concert over? Yeah. 
This is what happened on Monday evening in the Rage Against the Machine concert. It all began at a small portion of fence near the Staples Center, where the police and a very small group of protesters were playing cat and mouse. The police would advance, the protesters would panic and flee back into the crowd, and the police would retreat. There was a group of uh, quote-unquote anarchists, or the, the black clad contingents. Two people climbed on top of the fence and were waving a black flag. Nearby, the protest organizers were distracted. We had monitors at the fence, de-escalating the situation, calming things down, right? We had shopping carts with puppets, with problems and solutions our societies and communities face, and the police took it upon themselves to grab our shopping carts of puppets and take them away. The police were converging on the protesters here and spraying them with pepper spray and tear gas. They were in the process of voluntarily breaking up the assembly. The LAPD declared the entire area on a, an unlawful assembly. This is a protest pit. You have about 9,000 people okay. that they expected us to evacuate in 15 minutes. Were there lots of exits? or just There was an exit here, there was an exit here, an exit here. That raid was planned. It was planned ahead of time. It was timed and we were set up. Police were here. They're on horseback. They're all over. Ten minutes into it, they shot the lights. Now it's blacked out. People are confused. The police opened fire on the people exiting the venue with rubber bullets, bean bags, tear gas, pepper spray, and percussion grenades. We started hearing the firing up ahead of us. You know people that got shot by rubber bullets? Everyone got shot. And they were firing at the people who said, I think it's time to get out of here. The hardcore was still back there. It was like they started shooting innocent people with bean bags for no reason. People with video cameras and the like were being targeted with the uh, rubber bullets. They were shooting people that didn't have nothing to do with it. They were in the store. He's hanging out with concerts without 2,000 cops coming out and shooting them straight in the chest. And a whole bunch of people right here. People who were trying to exit could not. The police had their batons out and they were taking wide swings. And it was a mad scramble and people were falling, falling over these concrete barricades. The people behind me that were trying to push, I had no choice but to push people. The firing was getting closer. People had their hands up like this. Let's be honest, who's violent in this situation? It is not the youth. They have a right to come out to the street and fight for what's true. Countless survivors attest to being chased by the police to all corners of the city. He chased us all the way down Olympic, past the 110. We were all out on Olympic uh, Boulevard, running like hell. I really think that we should not fall going on the offensive and allowing Mayor Reardon and his boys with war toys to divert our attention from what these protests are about. It was basically trying to kill a fly with a nuclear missile. And most ironically, this was all occurring as the President of the United States of America, Bill Clinton, was partying a few miles away with the elite of Hollywood. The next day I was pissed. I was ready to make a citizen's arrest on the Los Angeles Police Department. I called the cops on him. That was fun. I got in a fucking political argument. He said, why don't they watch it on TV? He said, why, my best advice is don't tell them to go there. If you want to keep them from getting hurt, tell them to watch it on TV. The advice that the LAPD sergeant gave me over the phone was pretty good and very practical. After all, sitting home and watching it on TV was a lot more convenient, and you could also eat your favorite snack foods, thus keeping the economy strong. I wanted to get confirmation from a young person that this was good advice. So they said the best thing U.S. teenagers should do is stay home to stay safe. What do you think of that? The I, sergeant in charge of it said that to me. They just know that there's safety in numbers and they don't want a lot of people coming down here because then they won't be able to just be ruthless with them. I believe that any moving force can change. 70 million kids that are ready to vote, and it will radically change the political landscape. Kids need to hear the truth. We have the right to assemble. That's the reason we wrote this Constitution. That's the process of uh, militaristic takeover by private uh, police.
Today should be less violent than yesterday. Tensions around Patriotic Hall were already kind of high. After all, last night the police had stormed in claiming there was a bomb and shut down the broadcast of the alternative press. Coincidences like this would keep those pesky alternative voices from being heard during this convention. I went outside for a breath of fresh city air and was excited to see the police there yet again. This time, apparently, the victim of Democratic diligence was a permitted bicycle riding route for critical mass. The police sure were on top of it. People on the bicycles must have done something really horrible to get arrested, right? Um, well, it didn't seem that way. We were riding for a really long time. This giant phalanx of motorcycle cops joins us. Ride a bike, go to jail. Oh, that was the bike march? Yeah, it was. I mean, they are following us, and it didn't seem to be any problem. The motorcycle cops forced us to go the wrong way up a one way street, which incidentally is one of the charges against me now. And all of a sudden, at one point, they just pulled in front with the police cars, the sirens on, jumped out. I saw them knock someone off the bike, and everyone turned around and just tried to get away as fast as possible. And then they told us all to get off our bikes. Get off your bikes! Get off your bikes! I just want to get to Patriotic Hall, and I didn't even get that whole sentence up. I got like, I just want to. And he goes, I don't care what you want, get up against the fence! But you cannot tell that people don't have right to assembly. Let's not bullshit ourselves that we're living in free country, for God's sake. But okay, if any time you have protest, you have right to do this. Yes, you know what? I am from Poland. I recognize all symptoms, and those are not good symptoms. You know, it's like I feel like, like what I left there is haunting me here. What are, the, what are the symptoms you're talking about? Well, I'm talking about exactly the, the closing of the freedom. It's very smart. You give them a lot of food. You give them a lot of sport. You know, it's like Roman Empire. You give them a lot of not thinking tasks and they really don't care. Actually, people like to be not free. You see, that's the problem. That's why that's why Soviet Union was so inside successful for, for people and didn't have any big revolution because people like not to be free. People like not to be free. Yes, if you always in every situation, if you take it apart, and you just people hang on the corner of the street, disrupt that my is life? disruptive. But sir, why do you disrupt my every life? Every situation. Sorry about that. There's other things that disrupt your life. That there's other things that disrupt your life other than us. People like not to be free it, it, because you see what you do. You take away right after right after right after right. But slogan, you are saying our country is beautiful. Our country is beautiful. Okay, our country is the freest. Russians were doing the same. Soviets were doing the same. They had songs. Our country is the best. Our country is the free. The only in our country you can breathe free. That's a very popular Soviet song. And people believe it. These guys here are doing a fucking hell of a nice job. They are. Except now when they arrest innocent all people. All the fucking jail. Well, all you fucking idiots are doing a dis- Why don't we go to Nazi alive? Germany? Yeah. When they, they just put us in jail at whim. I returned to Pershing Square midday Wednesday. The atmosphere was quite a bit different than the eclectic freedom I experienced on Monday. This was a group under siege. They're over there in air-conditioned comfort right now, about six blocks from here, and they're not even pretending to be aware of the difficulties that we in our communities are facing. I knew the festive mood of Monday's gathering was more somber. Even the police had gotten a little bit serious. I'd never seen an armed paramedic before in my life. I was cheered up a bit to see my good friend, the billionaire. After I saw those damn protesters causing all that trouble on Monday night on the news, but I wasn't there and I believed the news. And why shouldn't you believe the news, my friend? It tells you exactly what you need to know. 
The news promotes stability after all, and stability is what we all want, isn't it? We want no change in the status quo. I soon bumped into other familiar faces from Monday. Whenever they're in public like this, they won't do anything bad. Have you noticed that? Yeah, I pretty much noticed that. But they, it's like, also, supposedly yesterday there was some anarchists were beaten, and uh, there was no, you know, there was no record of that in the, in the media at all. There was nothing about that. Wait a minute. Did you just see that? Or is that just my paranoia? What do you think of the behavior of the police over the course of the last three days? I think they've overreacted. I think they're trying to tell us what's coming up in the future about how they're going to control the population. The First Amendment to the United States Constitution expressly protects the right of people to associate and peaceably assemble to redress grievances. It is every American's right to peacefully assemble. It is wrong for police to discourage uh, that right, and it's certainly wrong for them to violate that right as they've been doing in life. Los Angeles this week. And a lot of them say the best thing for protesters to do is just not come down, watch it on TV. That's pretty good advice, isn't it? Yeah, that's uh, that's a way for people to express their ideas and to participate in a democracy. Right now, less than 50% of the people uh, vote because they're tremendously impressed with the system. Therefore, they don't even want to show up to vote. I was looking for answers to tough questions, so I expanded my search to boldly go where no one had gone before. You guys look not of this world. Oh yeah. That's right, we're from Vulcan. You are. Are things different out there? Absolutely, there is no institutionalized hierarchy on Vulcan. Soon my camera caught the attention of the local news. This was it. My 15 minutes of fame. We're being taped as we're interviewing you. This may be a first. We're interviewing you as you're interviewing me. That's correct. Are the people here unruly? Not at all. Are the people here a threat? Not, not that I notice. As, no. a, as, a, as a professional reporter, I've not noticed a threat at all here today. If this same group of people encounters violence... The youth have been meeting in L.A. for the past six weeks to organize a youth-youth contingent to go out to sample centers and show them that the youth are not going to let them get away with what they're doing. My son is one of over 2,000 people that were killed. He's right here in this book called Stolen Lives. Anyway, my son was, uh, my son was supposedly seen walking across the boulevard at around 10 o'clock at night with a gun in his hand, according to the police officer. We've had an investigation by a deputy chief, and he asked me, was my son right-handed or left-handed? I said my son was right-handed. He said, well, that explains things. Uh, there was gunpowder in your son's left hand, but none in your right hand. So he says, I think we know what's happening in that situation. Also, he said, uh, what really puzzles me is uh, never mentioned anywhere in the deposition or the reports that your son was shot twice in the back first. And he says, that really puzzled me. He says, I think I know how that happened. He was shot in the back first, and then while he was falling, he was shot again. It that there are other people like me who have lost their family members to police, and there's actually hundreds and thousands of us. Introduce Richard. His, his uncle was killed in Santa Rosa four years ago. He was shot four times by the Santa Rosa police in the police department, and all of the videotapes were um, broken. So Richard didn't want to say anything right now because he's a little intimidated. There's a lot of you guys out here. Thanks for coming. Uh, I'm very sorry. I cannot give you any money. I gave him both. both. Soon I bumped into one of my billionaire friends. He was having a discussion with one of the local residents. That's just us, as they say. Okay. But what do you think about the protesters? Are they nice people? Are they giving you Very nice. And they're helping me, man. They're Are they really? Really helping me. Cool. The police told me today that blacks can't come no further than Broadway. Why do you think they're doing that? Are they trying to make the city look different than it really yeah, is? Yeah, that's right. They're trying to hide the dirt. Thank this you, city is dirty. What they consider the dirt. What yeah. they consider the dirt. Hey, hey this city is dirty. They treat people we bad. They I don't know, man. Y'all from the same tree. We all from the same tree. They don't tree. know that, though, do they? We all fought in Vietnam. We fought to make this thing free. Did you fight in Vietnam? Yeah. My this thing ain't you free. You fought in Vietnam. It ain't free no more, man. I saw slut. Almost one year. What, what rank were you? Sergeant. Sergeant. Yeah, they, what they're doing here is nothing but another Vietnam. When we got there, that's how, this is how it was. 
shit, man. How it works. Uh, Same way. What the hell are you doing uh, asking for money if you're a veteran? Shouldn't they be taking care of your ass? Because yeah. they got a backlog, they say. The and, like, they trying to shot catch up the on their people. Bullshit. The I know it's bullshit, but that's how they get and away they with it. What would you like to see happen? I would like to see the whole system change. That the people take over again. The people of the country. Up against the wall and get down, down, down in the dirt and cry. Put your hands on your head and spread them. Or else you're dead. Nigga, you heard what I said. Guilty or not, if you're a black man, you just might get shot. Convicted, executed, right there on the spot. To make it hot. Out in the street, him lying under a sheet. Him started running because them started gunning him down. Because him was black or brown. Racist white cop. You know the guy shoots and say, hey, stop. And another brother dead. headquarters of Los Angeles. When I made the choice to go on this march, little did I know I too was crossing enemy lines. The sheer mass of officers made this more like a military occupation than a place of political expression. This seemed appropriate because the local police were backed up by 2,700 California Highway Patrol officers from all over the state. Many of these protesters were veterans. Having survived the police riot on Monday evening, so far, they had marched about problems with immigration, the effects of big money on the elections, the war on drugs and the victims, stolen lives and police brutality, defense spending, the WTO and corporate globalization, the exclusion of Ralph Nader from the presidential debates, human need, not corporate greed, the wealth gap, saving Iraqi children, women's rights, critical mass bicycle rights, justice for youth, the MTA and Bus Riders Union, Ministers Against Global Injustice, campaign finance reform, and now the march and rally against mass incarceration, police brutality, the death penalty, and freedom to political prisoners. These all sound like reasonable important issues that should be faced at the Democratic National Convention and the Republican Convention that had occurred a few weeks before, but they were left to be talked about on the streets of America, and these streets were occupied. We were all clearly behind enemy lines. So I decided to join them as a fellow citizen on their march to Parker Center to protest police brutality. Streets that were only dirt paths a few generations ago, where Native Americans lived in harmony with their environment, with no cars, with no skyscrapers, in what is now modern downtown Los Angeles. was part of the Stolen Lives Project inscribed with the names of the victims of police brutality. It was obvious that after Monday night, the organizers of the demonstration were incredibly careful to keep the people in place and to avoid any hostility with the police.
What was curious to me was how the issues of the protesters had been unified into one common theme, an anger towards the militarization of America. Now this was a theme that I'd never heard before, but evidence was coming up on every side that this was a valid issue. One of the billionaires was nearby, proudly exalting the police as the saviors of democracy. The billions of dollars we spend keeping everything under control, you know, keep this rabble in line so we don't change the status quo. I have to admit, I was beginning to mistrust the billionaires. at Parker Center, which is the police headquarters for Los Angeles, and I was glad to see the media there in full force. I knew that we finally had a chance to get our story out, and I hoped the media would now focus on the issues rather than focusing on the danger that the delegates face from these rowdy protesters. Even the police had cameras. I can't tell you how many times I was photographed. I wonder why. I was thinking that so many police were taking video because they were here to help the media who seemed to have trouble putting the issues of the protesters on the nightly news. Cops came with about 60 riot police on horses and they just started trampling people and beating the shit out of people. And people were trying to leave. But I tell you, this is what it looks like down Pichot Boulevard, down in Guam, up in Pico Union, down in East LA. Every motherfucking day, how do they fight? People listening to the billionaires became more and more scarce. I started to feel sorry for them, those misguided billionaires. Good job, aren't they? Really wonderful, wonderful job. And I'm so happy to see them because if the status quo were to change, if we started distributing money fairly, then we wouldn't be in charge anymore. And that everything would just go to hell, right? Right? Oh. See? Because we know what's best for you because we control all the money. We're going to pay for police and jails and all that nice tear gas and all those rubber bullets that some people got shot in the ass with yesterday. Who are the police actually protecting? The wealthy interests of the corporations around us or our individual rights to freedom of speech? Or the right to assemble and to petition the government to redress grievances? Pig in the city, cops 
this show? Or was it something else? Was it a new generation stepping onto the political stage, demanding a better world, getting ready to get down for revolution, seeking out different kinds of social change, covering their faces, putting their fists up in the air, getting down with organizations? I think, like what Mia said, they're more afraid of us than we are of them. It was time to move out. A march to Staples Center, where the Democrats were holding their national convention. Everybody that's in this parade of justice, keep on the streets. It was there we could be heard. We could make our voices known to the Democrats, who had ruled the country for the last eight years. I have to admit, I was a bit anxious to finally see the Democratic National Convention in person. Maybe Al Gore would be on the balcony waving to the people. People were assembling and speaking from all corners. This was democracy in action. I was a patriot in 1776, marching against the excesses of the British crown. Was this really the new millennium? Even an ambitious pilot wrote Nader in the sky on behalf of the unheard third party in this election. But as we approached Staples Center, I suddenly sensed something was wrong. Instead of clearing a path into the demonstration area, the police had let it get jammed up, and now our whole march came to a stop right outside the Democratic National Convention. This couldn't be good. Here we were stopped in the intersection with no place to go. We couldn't go forward, we couldn't go backwards, and it appeared as if we were pawns being played by the police in a game larger than any of us could possibly know. Clearly stopping in traffic was a violation of peaceable assembly, but the fact that we had nowhere to go made the situation all the more tense. The police around us appeared gleeful as they looked on to us with their bulging biceps and triceps, their glistening military hardware, their bean bags, their rubber bullets, their tear gas all ready for spraying. They were ready for action. This was a showdown, American style. Protesters knew they were being set up. And none of the protesters had any intention to see the LAPD repeat the police riot that had occurred on Monday evening. This was not going to become a free-for-all shooting gallery where the police got to exercise their military training. We were like cattle being driven into a blind alley awaiting slaughter.
get the truck out of the situation. We were able to move the truck out. We were closing the hole as soon as the truck was gone. But the police knocked the protesters to the ground. You know, escalated a little bit. One police took his club, started swinging at the protesters. They had garbage can tops, thankfully. The clubs were hitting the garbage can tops. Myself and a couple other women tried to form a barrier. We were knocked down by police clubs behind us. It was a very dangerous situation. We kept trying to keep it. Then another cop attacked another protester over here. And at that point, they, they just sort of push people back. They move cops in the center. A couple uh, shots were fired. The divide of the crowd, and it became a very difficult situation. And I told the police that they escalated it. They had some bad cops. They needed to take out the line, and they needed to demonstrate by, through what they did, not what they said, that they were serious about helping to de-escalate the situation by taking police out. We told the protesters that we had some choices. We could either go in, or we had to get out, but we couldn't stay. So we had to go back and forth. One group wanted to stay, another group wanted to leave. People were afraid to go inside to that area based on what happened Monday night. They felt like it was a trap. And quite frankly, that's a legitimate fear, right? I didn't want to go inside there with this police present what's just happened. We gotta let the people in. They where everyone could reach agreement that the best thing to do was to open up the space, let people make a decision whether they wanted to go in or go out, and create enough time for people to move. Ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do here in a minute, if you work with me, we're going to move all these assets out of the intersection. I'm going to open up this group of slide, and we will let yeah! people start in from the other side. Woo! We would like this to go all night long for you and give you the opportunity to protest as late as you were allowed to do and exercise all your first amendment rights. escalating the situation here um, because they really had no choice. It was either that or it was going to be another riot where they started attacking and shooting people. So you know what? Listen, our goal here is to send a message to the Democrats and the delegates and the world, right, that what's happening in this country and this political system is fucked up. We know that, okay? Let's get that message out and not this shit. Part of what we're here today is about police brutality and repression we're experiencing it right now, but we have an opportunity to keep that message out. Suddenly I found a hot dog sales vendor. I knew I'd be safe here. So I waited and I watched. The police, if they act reasonably, right, there's a way to create a situation where everybody can win. And I think we were able to do that today. Our main concern is public safety. We don't want any violence here. We are nonviolent protesters. We want to get our message about police brutality out. Unfortunately, it was police brutality that attracted all this attention today. So it appeared the situation was solved and it appeared the protest was over. And instead of entering into the protest corral, everyone headed north. I was wandering around in a bit of a daze, admiring the impromptu steel drum band that appeared out of nowhere. Fresh hot dogs were available at every corner. I guess this had been democracy in action.
I headed back, and when I found hundreds of policemen, I knew I was at Pershing Square, where tired protesters had gathered to plan for tomorrow's activities. I think everyone at this point was really exhausted, and I didn't know what to make of all the events that had been occurring around me. We had to get away. Fortunately for us, about 10 blocks away there was dancing. That whole week, a peaceful rave was taking place, where young people danced into the night. Their theme was, dancing is not a crime, and it seemed to me peculiar that in a so-called free society, such obvious statements had to be made. strength in the moonlight, for the next day was the final day, where all of the events that had occurred in the last week would come together in a sombering conclusion at the Democratic National Convention. Here we were at the Staples Center. I was rubbing elbows with the political elite of the Democratic Party. If I'm a registered Democrat, can I come in? Now without a proper pass. Huh, there was no way in. Is anybody going to vote for George Bush here, or are we just talking gore? None of the delegates would talk to me. Can I convert anybody over to Republican today? Finally, I ran into this patriotic doctor. Uh, this is a uh, patriotic, erotic, itsy bitsy teeny weeny bikini. <laughs> this is a nation of great diversity. We must not simply tolerate diversity, we must honor it and celebrate it. You know what I always say, freedom is the greatest aphrodisiac, but restraint is a close second. So we decided to head a hop, skip, and a jump north to the protest corral. We walked along about a half mile of fence. This was the buffer zone, where if the rowdy protesters rushed the fence and stormed towards Al Gore, they could be crushed. Never had I felt so protected, so safe, so secure to be an American. I don't like the looks of this, Eva. A few days ago, I had started as a mere observer, looking for a chance to see democracy in action, and maybe, just maybe, a chance to see Al Gore in the flesh, waving happily to his admiring public. But over the last couple of days, I did a transformation from observer to participant. Why are you uh, playing a drum? Well, 
I sort of like to slum it. It's nice to get out with the little people and, and make rhythm with them. I, th I think you're becoming a green. Absolutely. I'm a member of the ultimate green party. America, and that is change the foreign policy. What's that chopper doing, you know? Go away! Go away! Whoever that pilot is should be fired. Should be fired. Should be reprimanded. You can only push so much the, the sound levels here without hurting people's ears and without feeding back. So he was definitely affecting what was happening on stage. Is there a way to find out if that's an LAPD chopper up there? Is that an LAP doctor? As far as I know it is. Is there anybody from the Los Angeles Police Department I can talk to about them violating our First Amendment rights and intimidating us with a police helicopter? Can I ask if that's an LAPD helicopter up there? It is. But they're violating the First Amendment rights for speech. They're interfering with a lawful assembly. By having that helicopter interfering with a lawful assembly. That's actually a violation of their constitutional rights. attempt to drown out the interviews? That's obvious. What other purpose is he serving? If he was 600 feet up, you think he could still see this crowd? Yes. He could see it a lot better, couldn't he? He could also see what's happening down side streets. He could also see what's happening on the periphery. What do you think of that helicopter? It's like low intensity warfare type. Very difficult, very, very difficult to hear. It's getting lower and lower. The people of Colombia! What I couldn't understand is how people were still dancing, celebrating, and having fun amidst all this chaos. There was a spirit burning in each person here. I couldn't quite describe it, but I knew that whatever it was, it was the opposite of what the police presence meant. By now, Al Gore's speech to the delegates was over. He hadn't made an appearance on the balcony and the issues of the protesters were drowned out by helicopters overhead. There was going to be another march tonight. We would be marching down the streets where cars normally drive, but the message was perhaps the most important issue of the Democratic National Convention. So we said goodbye to Al Gore, even though we'd not come out onto the balcony and listen to our grievances. We waved goodbye to the delegates, who were probably on their way back to their hotel rooms by now. We waved goodbye to the police. But they came anyway. Do you think the spirit sort of of love that you felt in there? Are they interfering with it, the LAPD? Yeah, it's kind of obvious, isn't it? No matter what happens, remain cool and calm. Brothers and sisters, lift up two fingers in solidarity. 
do to continue to speak out, continue to demonstrate, and to be careful not to uh, become victims of violence. I don't have any advantage here tonight. Remember, no violence is our strength. downstairs, I wasn't walking fast enough for him. Did you obey what he told you to do? Exactly what he told me to do. Yet, where did he hit you physically? In the back. Show me where. Anybody else see it? I saw it. Why do you think it's got a siren on? Why is this the It was happening again. The minute the police were away from the spotlight of the media, they were up to their old pranks. What message was this sending to America's youth? The tension was unmistakably building as we approached the police, the sheriff detention centers in downtown Los Angeles. No justice, no peace. We made it to the Ponderosa. It's out of here. Everybody is out of here. One people, one nation. My brother, Danny Ray Smith, a young African American man, was in a mental health facility right here while handcuffed behind his back, being transported by three deputy sheriffs to another part of the jail. You know what happened next. He was beat to death. He was strangled. The vessels in his eyes busted out. My family is still suffering, and it was cover up from the beginning to the end. Them goddamn shares gonna pay spiritually because they gotta meet God for what the fuck they did to my brother. But in the meantime, people, but in the meantime, I'm at a grassroots level, right? I'm organizing. Not only with my coalition, but with, with people across the nation, black, white, brown, Filipino, Asians, anybody who's been oppressed by this goddamn oppressed system. We need to all stand in solidarity. And once we leave here, we leave in solidarity. Don't give them a reason. Because all they got to do is cuff your ass up and put you in there. You're just a fucking number. Solidarity. What a great end. What a great end to a week of protest where we showed the Democrats and the Republicans and the Los Angeles Police Department whose streets these are. Whose streets are these? Our streets. Whose world? Our world. Whose world? Our world our fists in the air and think about what we accomplished this week and think about whose world this is. So a moment of silence for our brothers and sisters right over there in the Twin Towers. Hands up. Millions and millions of 
millions of people all over the world want to see the people bust through this whole democratic charade that they do with these conventions and show the power of the people. You've taken the initiative. That's what we all learned together this week. That's what we all learned together. You stood up. You stood up against the largest prison industrialization in this country to you march. And when the LAPD told you you couldn't march, you marched anyway. You did not back down. You did not back down. You did not back down. Any final uh, words or comments? Uh, this was uh, something very special, for sure, the sense of community and, and just the endurance of the people to keep together through all this. It's been a long week, but it's been a beautiful week. With a lot of solidarity. This is something I'm not going to ever forget. But hopefully it's going to continue up to this time. Hopefully this will continue for a long time until we get a really big move going. This is, this is really this is Let's vote for Nader. I had come to the DNC protests as a curious observer, and over the days I'd been transformed by the images I saw, the words I heard, the experiences I had. And I tried to come to some grand conclusion about how the police buildup and the industrialized prison system could potentially indicate the government's desire to crush dissidents. Or I could come to the conclusion that the protesters were silenced because more than just making Los Angeles look bad to the delegates, the messages that they wanted to say were not desirable. And there was a coordinated effort to silence them by powers larger than local government. Or maybe I'd come to the conclusion of the importance of allowing third parties into the debates and how this democracy did not match what the forefathers had envisioned in the Constitution. Or I could come to a thousand other conclusions based on what I'd seen. But the strongest conclusion I came to was there do appear to be enemy lines in this country. And when you step across to the other side, it's impossible to return. Which side are you on? I want to ask you one thing in conclusion. Do you think these young people were... Uh, I guess I should say that there was a sense of unity amongst everybody, wasn't there? Yes, and that still is. And do you think these people shouldn't let all of the, I mean, it, it got kind of ridiculous after a while. Do you think we shouldn't let the police intimidate us? Do you think we no, should? No, shouldn't. That's what they're doing. So what you should do is maintain what you're doing, follow the laws. Remember, we got laws, and do what's right. That's what you're out here for, to do what's right. And what you're doing is maintain it, obey the law. But if we see something in society that's unjust, should we say something about it? Of course. That's what you're about. You are Congress. You are the law. Okay? All righty. All right, brother. Thank you, sir. Good night. And with that, Arnold, the Vietnam War veteran, walked into the night and lived happily ever after at the Democratic National Convention. <laughs>